at the hands a good idea and right focus to set it out. So please welcome with me Florian Trantner, co-founder of Runtastic, now for you. Hi. Hi. Welcome. You got the clicker? Perfect. Stage yes, is I got it. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Actually, we were four Austrian guys, not German guys, even though we love the Germans. No, no doubt about that. So, <laughs> yes, but really, that's no worries about that. So let's talk about sustainably successful in the app economy. Let's start with some facts and figures. So till the end of last year, I was the CEO of Rantastic. I'm still a co-founder. We started the company 10 years ago in 2009. Um, and within that time, we got about 265 million downloads just in this vertical health and fitness. So we became one of the biggest players in health and fitness in the world, and it really worked out very well. The good thing is we didn't have any money. We didn't get any fundraising in 2009. So in the first three years, we didn't spend any euros on marketing. It was really organically driven back at the time. In 2015, as we already have heard, we teamed up with the best and greatest sports company in the world, with Adidas, and we're still very proud of that. And after three and a half years being the CEO after the acquisition, I left the company by end of last year and then doing my personal time out. Um, and I'm doing just a little few events like this great event here, uh, the OMR. So, but let's talk about the app industry. The good thing, it's still a growing industry. I just brought some numbers, and as you can see, within the next few years, the app economy is still growing a lot. It's about a 40% growth uh, in the next three to four years. But also we have to be careful because many of those downloads and the reach is driven by gaming, by well-existing apps like the Facebook, the Instagram, the WhatsApp. And I also have heard from Apple today, from a friend of mine, that Apple has about 300 million plus subscribers in their ecosystem, which means it's still a big market. But also, let's be honest, how many app downloads or how many apps did you download within the last 30 days? I didn't download that many. Today I downloaded the OMR app. Uh, but other than that, it's not the market where you go in each day being excited about the next new app and what is going on there. Why is that? Probably you have, have heard about S-curves. Back in 2005, we had this uh, PC internet S-curve with many services built on top. Then the mobile S-curve started growing. And also for all the entrepreneurs out there, it's about the idea. It's way more about the execution, but also quite important is timing. When do you start your business? And we had really the right timing when just the app stores, the iPhone 3G uh, was coming out with the first GPS built in. So we really hit uh, the tipping point on the curve, which was quite helpful. But also we have to be honest, we are in a mature market and it's not that easy anymore um, to get new apps out there. And we know our use cases. You know for running, you take the Rantastic app. You know for photo sharing, you go to Instagram. So it's a little bit, you know what are you doing in this market? So there's two questions coming up. The first question, how we can build even new products and services on this existing billion scalable platform, the mobile internet? And the second question, what is the next S curve? What's the next platform? I'm not here to talk about the second bubble today, but that would be probably AI, would be cryptocurrencies, things like that. But let's talk about the apps. The good news is, you still can be successful in the app world. But we also have to admit, the industry changed a lot. We, we are coming from an industry driven by organic growth, and that means feature rings had a big impact. Visibility in the app store was, I would say, rather easy to get. So there was a lot of organic downloads without doing anything. And this industry changed totally within the last few years. Now we are talking about performance growth industry. Acquisition even became its own industry. User acquisition is a, such an important part of a, being a successful app developer today. It's also hard to find the right channels, how you promote your apps, and you always have to change the creatives, the advertising. You really have to be deep in there to be successful. So I'm saying it's easier to get something out nowadays because you have so many services to build something, but it's way harder to get it going compared to many years ago. 
So also looking at the funnel a little bit, when we started Rantastic, we just focused on awareness and acquisition. And we had about 150,000 downloads organically a day, each day, each day again and again. So we didn't focus on all the other points, like how can I create big awareness, acquire a user, but very important, activate a user. Then we have to make sure that the user is coming back and using your product, that you focus on the retention. After the retention, you want to get some revenue in because you need the revenue to spend it again on user acquisition. And best case scenario, you're getting referrals that people are spreading the word about your app. And with that, you need to track all the data. And it's super important that you know your numbers. In the funnel, you have to track each and everything and really know your numbers where you can optimize. Otherwise, it will be super, super hard. And for consumer apps, uh, or talking about the user acquisition team, it's almost not doable anymore without a, a high-performance user acquisition team. So I'm invested in startups where we're having about five, four, six people only in the user acquisition team because it's that important. What does a great app need, in my opinion? There's a good user experience, a clear use, use case. Very important, the onboarding. There's this saying, you will, there's no second chance for the first impression. That's like when you meet somebody, you make your first impression. When you look at the app, it's very similar. So make sure the onboarding is done in the right way. Ease of use. And also the rating prompt screen. I see apps, they crash, you open it again, and then the rating comes up. You don't want to rate an app like that five stars. So make sure the rating is appearing at a good moment. Next to that, sharing is super important. In many, many apps, you can share success. Whether sh a success will be you did a yoga session, whether it will be you did a run, whether you did a photo upload, which worked great out, whatever, make sure that people sharing your success or are they getting incentivized by doing that and make sure that this is working. Also having APIs to include other services, but the sharing economy is real and it's important to get something out. Business model, it's getting more popular to also make some money with an app because you can reuse that money to get new customers. Subscription became the number one business model nowadays in apps. We're living in this subscription economy where you can do your math, you can think about monthly, weekly, uh, 12 months, two year subscription, lifetime subscriptions, but here you really can do the numbers and sh invest the money you make. And last but not least, I talked about it, user acquisition is super important. Having a UA team, paid user acquisition, and there are still non-paid user acquisition. It's really the app stores work with keywords, app store optimization, or creating something else to get users in your app. and ad creation, I talked about it, the CM campaigns at the right moment, all those topics are super important. And again, you have to track the data and get the right data all the time. And I'm saying consumer apps live or die whether people share them. And that's super important. Make sure if you have a consumer experience, people can share your app. I give you a few best practices, what we have done so far and what we are working on or what we worked on when I was still there. Um, so one example was we built training plans at Rantastic that you can sign up for a marathon plan, 10K plan, lose weight plan. And you know, we tracked all the data and then we figured out on day 20, we have a high churn rate. We were losing that many people on day 20, we never knew. Then we tried something, changed the plan. And so we, we, we tried to make it better that we don't lose the people. But in the world tomorrow, or where we should now, is that we're learning from that data that we are building something that we already anticipate. We will lose you. You will churn within the next three days because we're seeing similar behaviors with many other users. So we want to predict what is going on that we can react in the right time, whether with a notification, with a CM campaign, and so on. Also what we did, we figured out we have a lot of content in health and fitness. So we started a blog just with two people, set up a WordPress blog, very small, now we localized our blog in five languages, even including Chinese language, um, and we became one of the most important or biggest fitness, health and fitness blogs in the world within two and a half years with a super small team, having millions of monthly unique active users there. And of course, if we are talking about running, we will then having a download button for the app and having a deep link for the training plan in the app. So think about maybe in your company, in your vertical, in that what you are doing, there's a lot of content which you already can use to build something more. 
and also use it for email marketing, all that stuff. And I will give you one more example from an app where I'm invested or a company. The company is called Tractive. At Tractive, we're doing GPS tracking for dogs and cats here on the collar. And we figured out we need an app for that, sure. But we figured out in our business model, we are building hardware and we are selling the hardware below production cost. That means it's a loss leader for each piece of hardware we sell. But you need the app and a subscription service that you can make use of the hardware. And we're having about 200,000 subscribers, paying subscribers in that app, in that product, and it's really working very well. What I want to say with that is, it depends where are you working, what is your app? Is it a service app? Is it a consumer app? But you really can play with the business model. And that is just an example how we did it in a very cool way, I would say. That was a little bit the input of apps. I want to use the last couple of minutes to tell you a little bit what I could learn within my time as an entrepreneur the, the last 10 years. Um, so first of all, you are in this never ending school called life. And that is beautiful. You can be here today talking to so many great people, whether you're on stage or not, it doesn't matter. There are so many things to learn. Never forget that. Life is more than just business. And there's always something you can improve. And if you're doing business, trial and error is part of the process. Of course you make mistakes. Of course you will fail here and there. But this is really part of a successful process. How else should you learn? And also think about that your employees, you have to really let them trial and error. Otherwise, fear is not a good leadership skill at all. You can't do it alone. Think about starting a company. There's this big idea people and there's the doer. And be honest to yourself, which one are you? Most often you don't being the doer and the visionary guy at, at once. So make sure that you find your right partner, your co-founders, and so on. It's really important. And if you grew a company, we started with four people. Uh, I left last year at 250 full-time employees from 42 nations. Um, you have to learn from manage to lead. You want to create new leaders in your company. And therefore, you really have to let them try, give them freedom, and they have to become great leader. Because at some point, like me, you are not there anymore in the company, and it should work. So make sure you're becoming a leader, and never forget the team. Together, everybody achieves more. It's your team building the great success in a company. And think about that, that your team is the most important what you can have in a company. Let me allow you to just three slides about a little bit self-marketing, I called it. It's just uh, a few things. Um, I'm a business angel and investor nowadays. I've invested in 15 plus startups, which is a lot of fun. But also I see it a little bit as a duty. I was allowed to be successful somehow, uh, to get a little bit of money. And I also want to reinvest. I want to give the knowledge and what I can to the next entrepreneurs of the next generation. And I think that is an important part that all we should do really talking to the next generation and supporting them. I'm also being part of the um, Shark Tank of Austria, which was a fun experience. It's really cool to see that in the TV, but also that helps really to change a country, think more entrepreneurial, think about all that topics, and that's important. And uh, last but not least, I published my first book last year, in German only for now, sorry for that. Um, but who is interested, that's really about entrepreneurship and very true stories, how we sold a stake to Axel Springer, how we sold the company um, to Adidas, how did the process look like, what was the pros, cons, what did we learn, all that stuff is in there only if you're interested. And the last few slides, I always call some words of wisdom, which is always quite funny. So first of all, will you still be alive in 10 years? That was the Forbes cover magazine in 2007. Read the headline, Nokia, one billion customer. Can anyone catch the cell phone king? I'm not asking now how many Nokia phones are in that room, probably not that many. It's just 12 years later, and the whole company is gone. So think about yourself, where will your company be in 10 years? Born in Austria, we have to think big. We're just 8 million people, and you can't start the next big business just in a small country. And hey, why not thinking bigger? We are being in this digital world. There's no borders. You can sell, you can download apps all around the world. Never forget that. Scale it. Think big. And that's really cool. You are allowed to do so. 
being here in Germany, being an Austrian, we tend to be in the right bucket here. We complain a lot. Oh, nothing is right, and this doesn't work, and no, 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 no. It's all about the attitude. So make sure you have the right attitude. Because if you're going out with a bad attitude, you won't get back a good attitude. So make sure you're being on the full class or the half full class. For all the young guys out there, there's uh, one of my favorites. Don't let anyone tell you you're too young to accomplish something. A baby shark is still a fucking shark. And if you're hungry, you want to achieve something, you are allowed to achieve something. And it's good to take advice, but it's also important that you believe in yourself. Don't forget that. Living in a very agile software development world, um, we often forget about deadlines. And for me, the deadline is always the greatest inspiration. I knew I had to upload my slides by Monday noon. I uploaded it one hour before yesterday noon. So the deadline is still important in each project. Otherwise, you will work good, but it, it won't work that good. Almost to my end, I was allowed to be in Harvard Business School for two times the last two years executive leadership training and we talked about play to win and not to not lose. So Sir Alex Ferguson from Manchester United came up with that term and think about you're being in the Champions League game, you win 3-0, you're going to the next game and you know, okay, we could lose. That's the wrong attitude. You're still here, you play to win. I always like to end my presentations with a high five. So I would invite you that you high five your neighbor now. I can't do that, but please high five yourself first of all. That sounds good, that's cool. And you see what is happening. We are all smiling and that's not that hard. So don't forget to high five your colleagues, your friends, your family, whomever. It's so easy. And this brings me to the end. Thank you for the attention. If you want to see a little bit more about my life, motivation, whatever, feel free to follow me on Instagram. It's a very easy name, Florian Schwantner. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, um, I hope you could learn something. Thank you. <laughs>